getting pretty cold now. The mornings are near freezing, so we're just getting firewood so we can keep firewood running pretty much. We can keep the fire going um, pretty much constantly in the house. I mean, uh, that will just keep it really nice and warm. And then we've also got our wet back on the fire, so that will have a, we'll have all our hot water sorted as well. So yeah, this is great. We're just harvesting all this fallen all these fallen trees to turn them into our heating. Straight over a tree, I like it. Yeah, another one. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted it warm. Forest one. So we've got a tree here that's fallen out of this cluster straight into another one and hung up. You can see all these splits here. This this timber is in downward tension. It wants to fall. Um, it's a fair old job, this one. It's, it's complicated because a lot of the times normally trees will just fall and they'll be bent like that. But this one's actually got another limb under there. So it's gonna want, it's gonna want to come down. I can't go downhill of it because that's even more dangerous. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll get a, a bit further away from that We'll take a wedge out of here and then we'll just sort of do an undercut, a push cut underneath and just see if we can't just sort of release some of that tension a bit more slowly. So the danger here is catching the bar or also being hit by a tree. So we don't want either of those things. So when I was just tensioning that chain, I was just making sure that I held the tip of the saw up, not down. So, free to move, but just under its own tension, just kisses the bottom of the bar. These should be sharp enough for that job, even though I've been firewooding this morning. It wasn't too dirty, it was all pretty much straight wood. Duck. Good. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's cracking. <laughs> there is all the reaction woods on this side. Mm. So that what that wants to fall this way. <laughs> Looks looser. Huh? It looked like it was loosening. No. So all of that is coming, you know, this way. <laughs> there's, there's no there's no downwards at all. That yeah. that um that wedge at the top didn't slack in at all. So it's it's all coming here. So we'll put a bit of weight back on it and just see if we can saw the blade. Because a pinch bar comes from a cut like that, and then as it goes like that, it, it just pinches, it's quite sudden. Normally you can move the saw in and out. But it's always nice to have two chainsaws for when you inevitably pinch a bar doing falling work. I knew this was going to be a bugger.
Chopping her at the old fashioned way. Old school baby. The nose is good. The bar's not crushed. <laughs> Pretty good. You seen the mark that I left on the wood on this side? <laughs> Am I in a safe space? Oh yeah, you're totally safe there. Okay. So even this now doesn't want to spring any further because that limb there is buried, eh? So I would have thought the whole lot would both move this way and go like that, but it was exactly this way. So now that this is lower, because it was up here, I didn't want to be cutting at shoulder height, but I think this will be easier to release now. Everyone gets a bar bound sooner or later, but it's just a bit too sooner rather than later than for my for my liking. You see the problem? I can't get on that other side and release it because that'll go. Woo. This wants to let go, but I don't know. See that? See that log on the other side? Mm. Really dangerous. the gym. Let's go rack them and stack them. Yep. Fully loaded. For this trailer. For this trailer, well, this isn't a um, you know, big V8 four-wheel drive. It's <laughs> just a 2.5 Forester, which is not saying they can't do it. Let's have a go. I've got a couple of drums here, um, got them from the tip. So what I'm going to do is just make a double barrel retort system for making charcoal. We've got a stack of wood down there and I don't just want to throw a match on it and, and, um, and just make a whole bunch of ash and waste product. I want to try and get um, something good out of it. What's going to happen is the heat is going to push the gases out of the wood. And if oxygen gets in here, all the wood that we're going to pack in here will just turn to ash and just disappear. So we want it to gasify. We want the, the gases and um, you know, other waste, like combustible products in the wood to turn into a gas and be pushed down and out and burn, burn out. So we'll have the metal lid up the top here. So we're going to cut this bottom off. There we go, one inch wide masking tape, just down there. It's just much easier line to follow than um, marker when uh, you've got to wear protective glasses and you don't have your prescription glasses.
So that was the oil that came out of that drum. So that, um, that colour means it's emulsified with water. That wouldn't be good for putting in machines, but it is a good sign if you're about to cut into a drum. Because <laughs> it means there's no volatile vapours and stuff like that. Looks pretty good. So we'll um, give it a little bit of a spruce up. The next step is to add a chimney to that one. This bit here, okay, I'm actually going to cut slots and push it in a bit just so we can drop it in. And then, this flue that we also scavenge from the tip, we're going to put in there. I'm going to attach that with machine screws, with sheet metal screws, um, and we'll just be able to lift that lid off, but that'll draw it really well and give off extra heat for us to stand around if we're enjoying a nice herbal tea under the stars. So there we go, marked a bunch of lines at 100 millimetres apart. We'll quickly just run slots down there, bead in the same side on each slot, and that'll give us a little bit of a, a twist as the air comes in. Well, sailing about, it didn't give me much opportunity to use my <laughs> big hammer, but now we have it. So here we go. Again, I'm just going to knock on that side of each slot to give us a little bit of a um, a little bit of a sloped entry, and hopefully induce a swirling air current in there. So I don't have a welder just yet, these are early days, and even if I did it would be kind of tricky because this is a lot of contaminants in it. Um, so what we're going to do is just trace around the outside, cut a star out and we'll, we'll attach it with screws. So there's our cutting guides and we'll see how that goes. I reckon a few hammer taps will be needed. So I'm only going to put four sheet metal screws in. So I'll tap, tap four of these triangles out hard against that. It should be in business. It's a bad time to be my neighbour at the moment. <laughs> Knocking those triangles out has made that fairly firm. It will go a little one step. Okay, so that looks about right. We've got chamber for making charcoal. And this is the burn cylinder. This this can be used for all sorts of, you know, like any sort of putting out heat, incineration, whatever. Um, you don't have to have this bit on, but I want that heat to get in there when this is happening. I want lots of heat to develop, so we, we gas up what's in there. And a flue will make it a lot more efficient and we won't have loads and loads of smoke coming out. Just burn that, have a burn in it just before we put the uh, charcoal in. Grab that <laughs> shelter that's lying around the property and see if we can have it as a little shelter. Oh, that so, we do plan to have this as our food garden. We've got to get a few things done first before we can actually have a garden. And one of the main things is that we need to get rid of these trees because they're eucalypts and they're sucking a lot of the water from the soil and the nutrients and goodness from the soil. And on top of that, in the morning, they are throwing shade over the whole garden. So there's very little sun here apart from right now in the middle of the day. It's about one o'clock now. But first, 
before we even deal with those trees, I think we're just going to let the chickens have a bit of free ranging in there and scratch around because there's quite a bit of grass and new shoots and stuff. So I think they'll enjoy it. And then we're going to get some black plastic and cover it all up and, and leave it like that until we're ready to start planting the garden once we've dealt with those trees. Pretty happy in there. <laughs> Finally, we could train that um, dog as a, a chicken dog, like a sheep dog. Yeah. I figured out um, telling him to get out of it. We just need all the other commands. <laughs> to she. Did I call it he again? Yeah. Poor dog. It. I just call it it. Who's our lovely dog? a bit different to um, how it was before. It doesn't have its blue paint anymore. We've done some trial runs. It's had a few burns. Yep. What we've narrowed it down to is like we'll fill it up with um, stock to turn into charcoal. Yep. In this case, this was that bit of old rotten outdoor furniture that was sitting in that garden. Yep. It's falling apart, so why don't we use this charcoal? Blue. So I'll fill it up with that feed stock. Yep. And then um, what I found the best thing to do is just put a whole bunch of small stuff on top light it up, keep feeding it until we actually see off-gassing and then put the chimney on. We might even scavenge some twigs and everything from over there and leave this burn pile as it is. important that we rolled that over and, and, and slid that in so everything stayed in there. I can't just put it in like that. Um, but now we've got to make sure that on the bottom of the 44, the 60 litre that goes in, like, contacts it. So what's going to happen as we build the fire around it, it's going to gasify the, the wood in there and that gas is going to escape out the bottom, push out and burn. Um, but no oxygen will get go be able to go back in there because wood goes to charcoal which goes to ash But if you stop the um, oxygen going in there, it won't get to that ash stage We'll actually have to keep the fire going in this a bit because a bit of rainwater has got onto that and wet it Yep So it wasn't as good as like at the end of summer where everything was super dry. We've had a bit of rain now Yep I guess it's a nod to the efficiency of it. like a burning in a drum with the air spaces down there that even such wet rained on wood. You know, yes, we threw a little bit of petrol on there, um, but that'll burn like that, like it's generating enough heat to dry it and then burn it. We've been at it for 20 minutes. The flue gets hot and starts to draw of itself, like it has the chimney effect. I think putting that lid actually keeps the heat in better, you know, we're not getting so much lost um, out. But we'll see. A bit preemptive on the um, on the chimney. I think an improvement with this will be we'll we'll put some secondary holes up around here in this flat part, just so we get um, that gas re-burning and enough oxygen. I don't think I'll put um, big enough slits in there. We've already made like about a wheelbarrow of good char when it was um, yeah, when it was summer and dry, this has this has been a little bit more, a bit more time consuming actually with um with the wet wood. But I think we are on top of it now. People will be wondering about the um piles of wood chip behind you, but they have to wait about to find out about that. Oh, and just the general <laughs> mayhem. One ambience around the joint. Yeah. 
So this wood on the top's smoking a little bit now because it's not really um, you know, driving off some steam. It's not really burning, but down the bottom, I think it's starting to kick off. We're getting a nice glow out of here. The ground's starting to smoke. It's getting pretty hot. And it's got that nice sound to it. Hello. Chuck the lid on. You don't have to secure the lid on like that tight, huh? No, no, I want, I want, some, I want some additional air in, in there anyway. Yeah. Oh, look at that. That's a deep rumble now. It's a much different sound to before. <laughs> Sounds like the same going on, doesn't it? That wood that's on the top now, the gas is taking off, but it's, it's still burning, but it's... Look, it's putting out a lot of this steam and smoke, you know, incomplete combustion. Well, it's cleaning up now. As it catches, that new wood as it catches. Here's some you prepared earlier. Mmm. So this is all um, yeah, harvest grade. Mm. Beautiful. And it's it doesn't leave a lot of dust behind. No. It? But it's, it's oh, charcoal all so the way cool. through. So these ones, see how in the past I've used a lot thinner feed stock. Yep. And that led to gassing a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. You know, it, didn't, it doesn't take as much to heat one of those up, but we're just doing an experiment now with that thicker stuff. Yeah. Because um, I did want some thicker charcoal like this that yeah. you, you might want to use for cooking. Yeah, this is a good size for cooking, yeah. Yeah. Sure. So the one that we're doing now will be good for cooking. I hope so, yeah. But we'll see, we'll see how it all pans out. All of these were fairly successful, but again, it was pretty, pretty fine stuff. Why do you make charcoal? So some of this is going to go into our garden. Yep. Um, or throw it into the compost that we make. Um, you know, with all the chicken poo and stuff like that. Yep. So all of the surface area that's in, in the carbon, yep. in the charcoal, like the matrix of carbon, it, it holds onto stuff really well. Mm -hmm. So it's good I, material to put into compost. Yeah, we'll probably, we'll primarily put a lot of it into compost and stuff like this. Yep. And I was also making it just so you've got charcoal to experiment with your outdoor cooking. For fire, for outdoor cooking. Yeah. Yep. And we've got pigs coming and, um, Pigs like charcoal whenever they've got an upset tummy or feeling under the it's weather. Good, good animal medicine. There's some pretty extravagant claims out there for charcoal. Um, you know, as soon as it's called biochar, people. So I'm not sure about it, um, but we're definitely going to give it a go. But but it is a recognised, um, you know, old timey remedy for sick animals, isn't it? Or even us, if we've got like a crook tummy, people used to use it to clean their teeth. And we know this is nice and clean. Really good stuff. Hmm. So we'll tip it out and have a look. I'm not that optimistic. Like this one was the, it's the thickest stock that I've tried so far. And I don't know. It's also wet. It's also wet. Was wet. But I mean, this is the, I, I guess this is about the, hot. this is probably, what, the third one that we've done. So. But I do, I do think that we might be a little bit stuck here with the, um, Oh. It looks good. It does look good. Still burning. I was, um, Too I was print. not. I was not confident at all that we made any charcoal in that drum, but it's um, now that oxygen's got in there. Look at it burn. Yeah. Okay. Well. I was completely wrong. Once again, my, my pessimism ran wild, didn't it? I was like, ah, this doesn't look like it's worked. But that jet roaring that we heard before was obviously uh, it gassing off. So we need to um, we need to quench that now, or we could just we could just put it into the ground here so no oxygen gets to it. But we'd have to fill up that little hole on the side. So I think we'll go with that option, and we might end up with no. Um, no wet charcoal to have to dry out. What do you mm -hmm. think? A lot of what we muck around with is, you know, like there's a lot of technology that we use that I don't understand what's going on with it, you know. Whereas this, it's sort of easy to understand. It's nice to give you, your brain a little bit of a break. Good here. Is it cool now? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's totally cool. Yeah. Totally cool, isn't it, dog? Hmm? Yes, help us out. Help us out, dog. 
Okay, it's cocky, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Took the water off the coffee. Oh, some bits worked and some bits didn't. Okay, where's the bits that didn't? Oh no, that worked. It's all the way it's through. It all worked. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, really good. Oh, it's so light now. Yeah, and it's got that. Yeah. Oh, well, this is, that worked really well. Yeah, that worked great. Perfect. So this is all good cooking quality yeah. charcoal, right? Yeah. So once we get this started, this will be good for you to cook on. Totally. So there we go, gang. It um, it all sort of worked out for us. I was a little <laughs> bit worried just because of the size of the bits that we... Um... Are you okay, yet? <laughs> Here, have some charcoal. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. Oh, she's yeah, gone, look. she's gone. She likes it. <laughs> <laughs> I am pleased. I was, I, I, was, I was seriously thinking that it wasn't going to work and I was regretting using these big bits, but no, that worked fine. So yeah, we just kept piling on the, um, the, the heat, but it was really marked, you know, like you could hear when the gas started to go. It really went for it. I think what we'll do though, is add some more um, holes. What do yep. you think, Pasky? So yep. as the gas comes out, you've got more air to burn. Um, and then I think when we put the lid on and we put the chimney on, I don't think um, it, it shut everything down a bit and it did start to smoke um, and we, we took it off. So I think we need more air. Yep. But this is um, a great product. It's really great. Really, I'm really happy with it. And because we did that suffocation method, um, we didn't need to quench it. Just, just denying oxygen was fine because all the other ones, um, I, didn't, I didn't do that. And I wet it down, and now it's, it takes them ages to dry. Yeah. Because that same porous nature that people look for when they call it biochar, um, that same porous nature it holds onto water for a long time. Because this doesn't need to be dried. This is this can go straight in a box or a bag and be ready. So I'll definitely make it like that again. Like I think that's pretty good. If you enjoyed the video, hitting the like button helps to get this video suggested to like-minded people. Thanks in advance and see you next time.